unit 9A expected value of a discrete random variable. The game is roll a fair die once. If a 2 is rolled, the payout is $30. If a 4 is rolled, the payout is $60. If a 6 is rolled, the payout is $80. And if an odd number is rolled, the payout is nothing. What is the mean payout for this game? In this game, the uh, payout is a random number. It depends on chance and it's a variable. So it's a random variable. And we're going to let x be a random variable equal to the payout per play of this game. What we want to do in this case is to find the the mean of x, the mean payout, the mean of the x's. That's called the expected value. of the random variable x. Let's make a chart. If a 2 is rolled, the payout for 2 is $30. And the probability of rolling a 2, well, for a rolling a die, the sample space or the set of possible outcomes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the probability of rolling a 2 would be 1 out of 6, 1 sixth. If a 4 is rolled, that's a payout of sixty dollars and the probability of getting a four would be again one out of six if a six is rolled the payout is eighty dollars and the probability of rolling a 6 would be, again, 1 out of 6. Finally, if an odd number is rolled, the payout is nothing, $0. And the probability of rolling an odd number odds would be 1, 3, or 5. That's 3 out of 6. What we have just constructed is a probability distribution table for the random variable x. To find the expected value we're going to need a formula. So the mean of these x's, that's the expected value. Of the random variable x, we're going to have a formula that says this is equal to the sum of x times the the probability of x. Now, because these x's are all the possible values that x could have, this constitutes a population. Therefore, the symbol we're going to use for the expected value is not x bar, sample mean, but mu, the population mean.
let's see how we calculate. We're going to need to calculate XPX. Let's see how we do that. Here's XPX. That means X times PX. 30 times 1 sixth. We can cancel, and that's 5. So this would be $5. $60 times 1 sixth. Cancel. That's ten dollars. Eighty times one sixth. Well, that one is a little tougher. Three, if you cancel by two, and forty. Three into forty goes thirteen point three three three, etc. Let's round that off. Since we're working with money, we'll round off to two decimal places. So that's $13.33. And finally, zero times anything, zero. Now, if we add these columns, we don't, we don't add the, the x column. If we add the probability of x column, we get 6 sixths, which equals 1. Uh, that's not an accident. That's not an accident. The sum of the probability column in any probability distribution always has to be 1, so that's an important check for us. The x, px column, if we add those, we get $28.33. So here's our table, and mu, therefore, is equal to the sum of the xpx column, which is the sum of this column, and that is $28.33. That means, on average, the payout for this game is $28.33. Now, if this were a casino game, how much would the casino charge the player to play this game if the game were fair? Fair meaning both the player and the casino have equal chances of coming out ahead in the long run. Well, because the casino is paying out, it's paying out, this is from the casino's point of view, the casino is paying out $28.33 on average. And if the game were fair, the casino should want to take in the same amount on average, $28.33. So therefore, if the game were fair, the casino is paying out $28.33, it would want to take in $28.33 on average to break even. So the answer to this problem would be $28.33. However, is any casino game going to be fair? Well, the answer is no, because the casino is a business. It has to pay its bills, plus it has to make a profit. So no casino game is fair. Therefore, how much would a casino charge the player to play this game if the, if the game, oops, to play this game, this doesn't belong here, if the casino wanted to make a profit in the long run? Well, if the casino is going to make a profit and it knows it pays out $28.33 on average per play, it's going to have to charge some amount more than $28.33 per play. How much more? Well, that's more of a question for a psychologist than a mathematician. If the casino charges only a very slight amount more than $28.33 to play, it would make a small profit. 
if it charges a lot more than 28.33, it would make a large profit on every play, but that might discourage the suckers from continuing to play. So this is a tough one. Suppose the casino charges $30 to play the game. How much profit will the casino average per play? Well, from the casino's point of view, now the casino is taking in $30 every time a person plays. That means the average amount it's taking in is $30. It's paying out $28.33. If we subtract those, we get the profit per play. And that would be $1.67 per play. If the casino, that by the way, that means that every time a person plays the game, the casino is saying, ka-ching, $1.67. Another person plays, ka-ching, $1.67. Of course, sometimes the casino is paying out money, sometimes it's not paying anything out at all, but on the average, it's um, making a profit of $1.67 per play. Finally, if the casino charges $30 to play and the game will be played 2 million times next year, how much total profit will the casino expect to make? Well, it's making $1.67 per play times 2 million plays, that would give 3.34 million dollars of total profit. Of course, it won't be exactly 3.34 million. Uh, that will depend upon whether the uh, players were lucky or not. So this depends upon chance, but it would be about, about 3.34 million dollars. You could use the calculator to uh, find the expected value. Uh, on the TI-84, clear the lists and do stat edit and put the X's in L1 and put the, the probability of X's in L2. Now, when you're keying in the probabilities, you could key in one divided by six, enter, and uh, the machine would put that in as a decimal. You'll notice the 0.16667. Next, we press that calculate as usual, and we choose one variable statistics. Then we identify the list as L1, where we put the Xs. Now the frequency list, it's not really a frequency, it's a probability in this case, but anyway, the frequency list is L2, and we uh, calculate. So it's, it's like, a, it should remind you of a weighted mean where the probabilities are the weights. Anyway, you press calculate and you will see your answer would be uh, as given as X bar. It's really mu in this case, because we have a population. But again, mu is approximately 2833. End of unit 9A. See unit 9B for a discussion of binomial distributions.